Dave and I often get asked, what's the best caliber for a handgun? Now, not every caliber is gonna fit every situation, but we've got our 10 favorites that we're gonna share with you right now. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than ammo.com. Chris, asking what the best handgun cartridge is is like asking what the best tool is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, is a screwdriver better than a hammer? Depends on whether you're confronted by a screw or a nail. Yep. That said, we're going to recommend some of our favorites just based on ammo availability, practicality for home defense, and just the overall pleasurability of firing it. Dave, you're absolutely right. You got to make sure that you fit the tool to the job. And if you need some tools to fit to the job, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free coupon at ammo.com. And while you're there, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. Become part of the community as Dave and I continue to talk everything about ammunition and firearms. But if we're talking about ammo availability and ease of shooting, there can't be a list without the 22 long rifle in it. It's the most popular round on earth. It's very cheap because it has a rimfire primer, which is a more economical type of primer. It's usually used for hunting squirrel. Uh, you know, you can take porcupine, raccoon, things that get too close to your trash cans at night, you might say. Yep. Can be used for self-defense. It lacks very much stopping power, but people love how it's, it's very low recoil. You can keep firing rounds at the threat without losing your aim on it. You know, I think that's one of the biggest benefits of the 22 LR is that, you know, it's low recoil. The 22 LR makes a great choice because, one, you can shoot a ton of it and not break the bank. In self-defense, I would prefer something with a little more oomph behind it. You know, one thing you touched on there was the subsonic ammo for 22 LR. The 22 is an absolute blast to shoot suppressed. Using subsonic ammo is completely here and safe when you have that suppressor attached to your handgun. But let's kind of step up the power level just a little bit with our number two recommendation, and that's going to be none other than the 9mm. The most popular centerfire handgun cartridge in the country. Yeah, you can't go wrong with the 9. There's just so many different ammo options available. This stuff is just everywhere. If you were going to buy your first handgun for self-defense, easy recommendation to make it a nine millimeter. It gives you that balance between recoil and power that I think is hard to find in a lot of other handgun rounds, especially when shooting a subcompact, a high firearm that's really light. And the nine millimeter is easy enough for pretty much everyone to handle. And it's why a lot of law enforcement agencies are switching back to the nine mil. Let's talk about another nine millimeter round that's actually a little bit smaller, and that's none other than the 380 ACP. But yeah, the 380 was developed by our Lord and Savior, John Moses Browning. I say that jokingly, of course, but he made it as a personal defense round, and I think that most shooters would consider the 380 about as small as they feel comfortable when concerning concealed carry. If you're looking for the smallest semi-auto that you can reasonably expect to bail you out of a life-threatening situation, it usually comes down to 380 ACP. Yeah, really nice, low recoil, easy to handle, excellent option, and can definitely do the job. Now, another one that can do the job, and it's going to be the 38 Special. The 38 Special, associate it strongly in your mind with, with revolvers. This yep. is the one you pick if you want to carry a small revolver. Now, Chris and I have argued about this, but I feel like a revolver is reliability and and just how easy it is to learn how to use gives it a lot of advantages. It's also kind of diminished for, for being a little too weak, but uh, don't forget, this was developed for the United States Army around the turn of the century. The 38, especially the 38 plus P, is going to be more than enough for self-defense in pretty much any situation. And, you know, having a little snub nose revolver that you can almost forget that you're carrying is a very comfortable concealed carry, and you've got plenty of firepower if you need it. And you don't even have to pick up your brass when you're done because it's all there in the chamber. And it's really easy to reload that brass multiple times. Just make sure you don't double charge your 38s. That's a bad day. But stepping up the power level a little bit, uh, this round is about as American as apple pie. It's the 45 ACP. Oh, gosh. Well, yeah. Synonymous with the 1911. This round yeah. has been around for over 100 years. It's interesting because none of these ever break the sound barrier. 
It's one of those rounds that is just timeless. And this round just slaps. It is a two-time World War champ. The 45 ACP just endures, and it's not going anywhere. I think popularity for the 45 is still incredibly high. You can mm -hmm. find ammo for this everywhere. It's not overly expensive. And like you said, it's easier on the ears if you have to shoot without ear pro, though I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Well, that bullet, it's, it's, it's one of the wider handgun bullets at .45 inches in diameter. Even if the bullet fails to undergo terminal expansion, it's just naturally equipped to make a wider wound channel than uh, any of your other bullets really we're going to consider today combined. Now I will say it is a step up in recoil, but most shooters describe the 45 ACP recoil as more of a push. 45 is very easy to handle for most shooters. Let's talk about another 45 caliber round that has seen a lot of resurgence as of late thanks to a few revolvers that have come out, and that's the 45 Long Colt. 45 Long Colt was nearly dead. It was basically only used for cowboy action shooting competition, but really has seen a resurgence and a lot of popularity increase and demand for the round lately that uh, many thought was obsolete. A judge or a governor can fire 45 Long Colt and 410 bore shot shells. Yep. And if you're like me, the thought of a, a revolver that is a shotgun too is just too great to pass up. A great round to choose if you like something a little bit bigger and you want that nostalgia factor. Now, one of these rounds we're going to talk about here, I am, you know, probably the most outspoken detractor of this round, but many people love it. It's the 40 Smith & Wesson. Uh, the 40 s and w or as some people like to joke calling it the 40 short and weak uh, is basically a chopped down 10 millimeter that uh, the fbi adopted after the 1986 miami shootout now for me personally i don't like how snappy the round is and high pressurized it is from a reloading standpoint it's walking that fine line of being really you know i want to say dangerous but it's it's close if you reload them just a little bit too hot and uh, me personally, I just don't like it. I love my nine mils, I love my 45s, but some people just love having that jack of all trades, master of none round, the 40 Smith & Wesson. Just because my personal opinions of it are negative doesn't mean that yours should be. This round has amazing terminal ballistics. It has deep penetration, really hits hard, and only sacrifices a little bit in magazine capacity compared to the nine. It is a very formidable round and not one that I am going to discount at all. And another round on our list that packs a lot of power is the 357 Magnum. Now, of course, the 357 was made by the father of the modern Magnum himself, Elmer Keith, and he basically wanted to increase the power of these 38 special rounds that police officers were using that they were finding ineffective against bootleggers back in the day. It's great. I mean, people use these to hunt deer. And I think that's the first round on our list that we'd actually say you can do it with. So we're, we're starting to get up there in power. Now, yeah. if you're looking for another round that's got some power, and we're moving into bear country now, we're yes, going to talk about the 44 Magnum. Obviously, this one's most famous because uh, roguish San Francisco police inspectors use it. Oh, yeah. Dirty Harry, the man himself, carrying a Smith & Wesson Model 29, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. Way, way powerful. This is a big step up from the 357 mag, which is running on the hairy edge for self-defense as well. It'll definitely do the job, but you're running that risk of overpenetration, as well as bear defense, which is what a lot of hunters who are going through bear country or uh, hikers are using uh, as that uh, special bear repellent uh, when maybe the pepper spray just doesn't cut it. Touching on a couple things I just mentioned, uh, you can fire a 44 Special and a 44 Remington Magnum firearm. Good luck finding it, though. Yeah, it's not nearly as popular as 38 Special, so you're, yep. you, you can find it. You're just not going to find it as easily. Mm -hmm. You also get the option of having a uh, lever action rifle if you get a 44 Magnum uh, revolver as well. That's pretty much it. Boy, is it going to deafen you if you fire this one indoors. Kind of another black eye against it for home defense. It has some heavy recoil, definitely not on the cheap side. So if I'm picking my first handgun, it's probably not going to be a 44 mag, but definitely one of the more popular, powerful cartridges out there if you want mm -hmm. something big that hits hard. Now, one that's not going to be so rare that is going to be the only semi-auto that I would feel comfortable carrying in bear country is the 10 millimeter auto. 
This one is actually standard issue to Norwegian dog sled teams in the event mm. that they run into polar bears. The 10 millimeter yeah. is a big, potent round. Can definitely do the job against bear and really packs on the punch. As I mentioned earlier, was the progenitor case for the 40 Smith and Wesson. And uh, this one you could probably use for deer hunting as well, though I'm not sure if I'd be taking my Glock out uh, to hunt Bambi. No, actually, the 10 millimeter was developed for the FBI, and they mm -hmm. used it a bit, but they they judged that it was too, too the recoil was too strong for some of their field agents. Yep. Which means you're tougher than an FBI agent if you can fire it. Yeah, the 10 millimeter definitely a powerful, powerful round, but I'm not sure if this is going to be one I would recommend to first time shooters because of the recoil. If you're just getting one handgun, you're probably either going to be looking, in my opinion, at the 357 Magnum or the 9mm. Those would be my personal choices for the reason that we outline. 9mm because it's everywhere. Law and shoot, enforcement shoots it. Uh, it's the most popular center fire handgun cartridge in North America and for good reason. It has the power and the technology behind it to make it as potent as it is. The 357 Magnum, if you love revolvers and lever actions, makes a great option for having two firearms with one caliber. Uh, those would be my picks, Dave. What, what are you, where are you at on this? I'm right there with you. You stole the words out of my mouth. Well, there you have it. Those are the best handgun cartridges that Dave and I would recommend if you're looking to pick up a handgun. And if you need ammo for any of those, make sure you click that link down in the description in the pinned comment. Get your free coupon from ammo.com, and we'll see you out on the range.